This is a quick tutorial that'll show you how to record your screen for free using OBS Studio. There's a lot of reasons to record your screen. You might want to create a tutorial or maybe a speed painting of your artistic process. So the first thing we need to do is just do a search for OBS Studio. We want to go to obsproject.com. Then you'll choose your operating system. Windows, Mac, and Linux are supported. And then you'll choose to download the installer. Once the file's been downloaded, simply install it by double-clicking on it and then follow all of the instructions. Now that it's installed, we'll go ahead and launch OBS. If you're a pretty tech-savvy person, then you can skip the auto configuration. Otherwise, I recommend you go ahead and click yes. If you're going to be doing live streaming in addition to recording, select the first option. Otherwise, if you're only going to be recording, select the second one. Now it wants us to choose a base resolution, and you could think of this as the video size that you're going to be outputting to. In most cases, this will be 1920 by 1080. That's standard HD. But you can also select the display size of a particular screen on your computer. So for example, I'm using a Cintiq 27 QHD Touch, which has QHD resolution. And so if I wanted to record all of that resolution, I'd select this. Frames per second controls the fluidity of the video. 30 frames per second will make the file size a bit smaller and is totally acceptable. However, if you want the movement in your video to look a lot more natural, or if you're going to be doing a lot of time lapsing, then you may want to choose 60 frames per second. If you're not sure, just go ahead and leave it at this setting here. Now you can go ahead and look over these settings here. I think these are fine settings. It's going to use my NVIDIA encoder, which is good because I have a video card that supports encoding. That'll take some of the burden off of my CPU. Recording quality set to high, that's great. Medium file size, excellent. And then all these other settings look good, so we'll click on Apply Settings. Doesn't get any easier than that. Now we can go ahead and maximize our window here. And what we're seeing is the OBS interface. We have our file menu up here at the top. Down here at the bottom we have Scenes, and then Sources, and then our mixer, you can actually see the little levels moving as I'm talking. There's also a meter for desktop audio as well if you're recording sounds from your computer. We can transition the scenes, and we can start and stop the recording over here. We can also change some of the settings. If we go into settings, we can just look through our preferences here. If we go to output, this is where we can change the output of the video that we record. We can also choose the recording path. I'm going to choose a custom location. If you wanted to change the recording quality, you could do that here. If you want it to be slightly higher quality, you could do that, but it'll be a larger file size. High quality is probably fine for most applications. Recording format, you can change from FLV to these other formats here. You'll want to consider which formats are supported for your video editor that you'll be using. MP4 is a good universal option. However, there can be issues with the recording locking up if it gets too long. So if you're having that issue, you may want to switch it to MKV. But let's just choose MP4. And then here's where you can choose your encoder. As I mentioned earlier, I have a good video card, so I'm choosing the NVIDIA encoder. Let's go to audio, and we can change our audio settings if we want. If you want slightly higher quality audio, you can set this to 48 kilohertz. If you're just going to be recording your voice with a microphone, you can set the channels to mono. And then you can choose your different audio devices here. For example, for our microphone, I want specifically this microphone here. Let's look under video now, and here's where we can change our canvas resolution or the size of the video that we're creating and the FPS as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using a screen that has a resolution that is higher than 1920 by 1080. So I don't want what I'm recording to get cut off. So I need to change this to 2560 by 1440. You don't need to change this if your screen is 1920 by 1080. However, if you're trying to record a screen that's a higher resolution, then again, you'll want to choose the appropriate resolution here because that's going to make sure that it records your entire screen and not just a portion of it. So I'll go ahead and click on apply and then OK. So now we've set up our canvas or our stage for our presentation. And right now, all we have is this black void. There's nothing being recorded and there's nothing being shown. So to record something, we need to go down here to the bottom left to scenes, click on the plus button, and we can name our scene. You can have lots of different scenes. You can have a scene for live streaming, for recording your speed paintings, and you can even have variations of scenes. So I'm going to call this one Cintiq 27 Screen Record so I know what it is. I'll click on OK. And the scene can have multiple sources. A source would be, for example, a screen that you're recording or a sound that you're trying to capture or a picture. So the scene is kind of like your individual presentations. Your sources are like the individual elements within each presentation. So let's click on the plus in the sources to add a source. We can capture an entire display. That would be everything shown on a screen. Or we can capture specifically just windows in an application. I want to capture the entire display. I'll call this Cintiq 27 because that's the screen that I'm capturing. I'll click on OK. And now we're seeing this infinite video loop because what we're doing is we're recording our screen, 
but our screen has OBS on it. So we're recording our screen, recording OBS, recording our screen, recording OBS, off into infinity. So after you're done playing around with this effect, let's move on and figure out what to do about it. You have two options. One is to click OK, and then you can take OBS, and you can move it over to a different screen if you have multiple monitors. If you don't have multiple monitors, then you'll want to go ahead and launch the application that you want to record. I'm going to launch Photoshop here. And with the application that you want to record on your main screen, go ahead and just put that side by side right next to OBS. And because I'm using Windows, I can just snap these side by side. So we want to be able to see the application that we're going to be recording in and OBS at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File New. I'll create a new canvas to paint on here. And if I wanted to do any other kind of setup, I could do that as well. So now we can see over here in OBS, this is what we're going to be capturing. Now keep in mind, what we'll do is when we're about to record, we'll just hit full screen like this. So you won't be seeing OBS while you're recording. But in the meantime, we're just going to put it back like this. So now OBS is set up to record our screen. The next thing that we'll want to do is look down in our mixer. If you're going to be recording any audio, then you'll want to make sure that you're getting a level here. So you can see as I'm talking, this little meter moves. You want that meter not to go into the red here, because if it does, then your audio is going to clip and it's going to sound really bad. You don't want it to be too low in the green area here, because then you'll be too quiet. So you can make yourself quieter or louder using this slider here. Desktop audio is going to be the audio that your computer produces. So if you're playing music from your computer or recording a game or something like that, then desktop audio is going to control that level. If you don't want any audio, especially if you don't want a recording of yourself breathing heavily, then you can also just mute your audio just by clicking on this little icon here. So I'm going to go ahead and mute both of these here. If your video application will allow you to do so, you can always add narration or music later. So now we're ready to go ahead and start our recording. We can do that by clicking on Start Recording, and as soon as we click this button, it's going to start recording. So I'm going to click Start Recording, Then I'm going to make my application that I want to record full screen on the screen that I want to record, and then I can just start drawing here and zoom in just a bit so we can see more of our artwork. And I'll just draw some little example here, just a doodle. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You could spend minutes recording or you could spend hours recording. I do recommend that if you're going to spend a lot of time recording that you try to break up your session into multiple videos because then it's less risky that your computer is going to crash or something bad will happen to the recording. And plus, it's just nice to take a break anyways. So don't feel like you have to get everything done in one sitting. You can cut out mistakes and you can speed things up or slow things down. You can really do a lot in video editing if your application supports things like that. So let's say that this weird lumpy cactus looking thing is going to be my drawing and my speed painting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just minimize Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and just stop the recording. And if I look in my recording destination folder, there is the video that I recorded. If I just simply play through it quickly here, you can see that it recorded my entire process. So now that we have a recording of our screen, we need to do a little bit of basic editing to it to trim off the beginning and end, cut out any mistakes, and speed it up if we want to make it a time lapse. You can do that in your video editing software of choice. For example, you could use Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. I prefer Adobe Premiere Pro. Some people prefer Final Cut Pro but there's also lots of free options available. I'm going to show you how to edit the video in Adobe Premiere Pro, but you can follow along with this tutorial using just about any video editing application. I've gone ahead and gone to File New and created a new project. I'll go ahead and call this Cactus and I'll choose a location to save it. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the Editing tab here, and my interface might look a little different from yours if you're using Premiere Pro because I've customized it just a bit, but really the most important things we need are the Program Window, the Timeline, and the Project Folder, you can find all of these windows if they're missing under the window menu here. So right now we have a blank project. I'm just going to drag in my video footage here into the project panel. And then I'm going to drag the video file that I recorded in OBS onto the timeline. That's going to automatically create a composition and set it to the appropriate settings. Here on the timeline we can see our video clip. And if we drag the playhead here, we can scrub through and we can see our recording. So what we want to do is we want to trim off the beginning and end and cut out any mistakes. So I'm going to go to right about here. This is where I start drawing. I'm going to go to the razor blade or cut tool where I can hit C on my keyboard. And I'm going to cut right here on this line. And I'm going to drag my playhead over here until I find the end of my painting. And I'll let it go a little bit longer so there's some room for people to observe the final product. And I'll cut it right here. 
Then I'm going to go to my arrow tool. I can hit V on my keyboard. That's the shortcut for that. I'm going to select this stuff that I want to trim. Hold down Shift, select the other bit here. And then I can go to Edit, Ripple Delete. And that will automatically delete everything and scoot the clip over so that it lines up with the beginning. Now if I play back, you can see I've cut off that beginning. But I do notice there's a mistake here that I want to cut out. So I'm going to go back to that Cut tool with C. I'm going to cut there. And then I'm going to cut on the other side before I made that mistake. Select the mistake. And this time I'm going to right click on that segment. And I'm going to choose Ripple Delete from here. You can also set up a custom keyboard shortcut like I've done. And you can make the Delete key Ripple Delete. So now we have our video without any mistakes and without any extra video in the beginning or end. If you wanted to, you could drag in some other things like your logo or anything else that you want to add to this video. But because I want to keep this very, very simple and very basic, I'm not going to get into doing that. Now I know I used Premiere Pro to edit this, but you can use that same cut tool and all of these principles in most video editing applications, even the free ones. Now if I want this just to play back full speed or real time, I could do that. And to do that, I will need to render out my video. So I need to go to File, and then Export, Media. There's a lot of really complicated settings here that you could choose, but we'll make it really easy. We'll just go to Format, we'll choose H.264, and under Preset, I'm going to choose YouTube 1080. You would want to choose the size that matches your video here. Now 4K would be too big, and 1080 is a little bit smaller than what I recorded, but that's OK. This will downsize the video a little bit, and I think that'll be fine. If you don't want to downsize the video, another option under preset is to go to match source high bit rate, and you can see that it keeps it at 2560 by 1440. But I don't mind if this is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to set it to the YouTube 1080 preset. We can go ahead and go to output name and give it a name. I'm going to call it Premiere Edit, and I'm going to save it in this location here. Then you can either click on export if you want to render it directly from in Premiere Pro, or you can go to Q. Let's just make things easy and let's just export it from within Premiere Pro. Now, if this is a really, really, really long recording, you're going to have to be patient and give it some time to export. If you want to be able to do other things with Premiere Pro while it's rendering, then you would want to just send it to the Q and render it with Adobe Media Encoder. Let's just go ahead and export it here. This is a very, very short video, so it's going to export quickly but it's not unusual for renders to take a lot longer than this, especially if the video is really long and there's a lot of complicated edits and effects in the video. So what this has done is it's essentially turned our movie composition here into a final movie that we could play or upload. So if I play that video back, then this is what we get here. Now if we don't want it to be real time and we want it to be faster, if we want it to be a speed painting, that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is select all of our clips here by just dragging a box to select them all. And then we will right click on that track and we will choose Nest. This is just going to group them together essentially into a little sub composition. Now that that's been nested, those two clips are essentially one. And we can right click on it again. And then we can choose Speed Duration. And we can choose a speed value. For example, if we want it to be twice as fast, we could do 200%. Or if we want it to be 10 times as fast, we could do it 1,000. You can also see the duration, which you can set here. So if you know you want it to be a specific duration, you could set that. If I put it back to 100%, you can see the total duration is 46 seconds. But if I wanted this to be, let's say, 15 seconds long, then I can just type that in there. And then we'll click OK. And that shrinks our clip down. You can also hit R on your keyboard to select the Rate Stretch tool. And then you can simply just drag out the end of the clip to make it exactly as long or as short as you want it to be as well. So if I want it to be exactly 30 seconds here, I can just put it right about there. Now if I play my clip back, you can see it's playing back a little bit faster. If I want it to be noticeably faster, then let's make it even shorter. Let's make it just a few seconds long here. And you can see it plays back much faster. Now of course we need to go ahead and render this. So we go to File, Export, Media, we can choose the same settings as last time, but we'll probably want to give this a different name. I'll call this Premiere Edit SP, that's short for Speed Paint. I'll save, I'll go to Export. It's going to export much more quickly this time because it's a shorter file. And now if I play back that video, you can see here's my Speed Painting. Now of course you'll want to save your composition in case you want to make edits later. You can go to File and then Save. This is just going to save your project. And if you ever want to come back to it and make changes, you can. For example, you might decide that if you made a speed painting of something and then later you want to show somebody the full version, well then all you have to do is simply 
select your clip, hit Ctrl R to go back into the speed setting, and just put the speed back to 100, and then save this as a version by going to Save As, and you could call it long or something to show you that there's a difference between the short and the long version. So there you go, that's how you can record your screen for free using OBS and then edit the video to make a speed painting or a tutorial or anything else you like. That wasn't so hard, was it? If you found this information helpful, consider supporting free tutorials like this at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.